welcome back to the Not Carrie Bradshaw YouTube channel. Um, and also welcome to my press on nails that I got from Static Nails. This is not an ad, just letting y'all know, figuring out a little workaround uh, since we can't go to nail salons so we don't die. So <laughs> I'm testing out Static Nails. Really quick review, um, not a perfect fit, but they will do in a pinch. And there are other nail companies where you can measure your nail bed and get like a custom sized one. I'm not gonna go through all that, so these are just getting me through in a pinch, and it's fine. So in this video, we are recapping season four, episode two of Insecure, where I feel like the theme of this episode is just like how to effectively communicate. Like, one thing that has always irritated me about sitcoms, because like, if you don't know, I love TV. I love sitcoms, but one of the things that always irritated me is that the crux of the conflict in, in most episodes was just like a slight inconsistency in communication where it was like someone really needed to tell someone something but they just couldn't bring themselves to do it or it was well I tried to tell you but I just couldn't find the right time and it's like bitch you really could though so <laughs> I have always found that really annoying, so I think I especially enjoyed this episode because there was the exploration of what happens when you don't effectively communicate. And I think we also, we have this habit of saying like, oh, communication is the key to every relationship, but you also have to be in communication with a person who is receptive. And I think that's when our attachment styles kind of come out to play, where if a person isn't receptive to what we're saying, then we kind of freak out talking about you molly bitch so i figured the best way to recap this episode is to go like character by character like character group by character group so first character group we have to talk about Issa condola lawrence okay i am obsessed with condola's character in the sense that number one those boots were super fucking cute um i like that she refuses to let other people make her uncomfortable she is really great about establishing boundaries she's really great about calling things out in the moment so that you can move past them and i think that's a mistake that a lot of us make where something happens that makes us uncomfortable or makes us uneasy and we either try to take the high road which sometimes the high road is just problematic as fuck like i love michelle obama forever first lady but i'm sorry sometimes you need to go low as a way to get high so i think um when we don't call things out in the moment they fester and we end up kind of retroactively trying to fix whatever the moment was where somebody like came at you wrong and you were like mm, i don't want to address this right now because either you're like afraid of the confrontation or for me i'm always afraid that i'm gonna come off too hard on people because sometimes I do like I tell people if you come and slap me in the face and then I stab you sure I escalated things by like involving a deadly weapon but you also didn't have to come slap me so like you know conflict that's what conflict or like verbal confrontation is like to me sometimes where you want to call a person out for like coming at you wrong but you don't want to do it too harsh and we'll get back to that in a moment so Issa and Condola are walking through Issa showing Condola, you know, this is what I want to do in this space and this is what I want to do in this space. And I really appreciate Condola giving her this positive reinforcement because I don't think that Issa's friend group has been great about encouraging her. I think their friendship seems to be based on like a lot of just like shade and judgment, to be honest. And it doesn't seem like a very productive friend group. So I think that Issa is kind of finding her footing by having this person give her some positive feedback about choices that she's making on her own. That's something that you really need as an adult person, especially as you're learning how to better adult, like learning how to better yourself, like prioritizing your own wellness. You need someone at some point to just give you a pat on the back, like sometimes you just need external validation and I appreciate Condola giving her that so they get to a point in the conversation where Issa realizes oh shit Condola is about to go on a romantic getaway with my ex dude and Condola let's just call out the awkwardness right now call out the awkwardness and then let's move on I don't want things to be weird between us um you know I 
I, I, we have a great working relationship. It doesn't have to be weird. Let's just move on. And then they make this joke about Lawrence, which was harmless enough. But then fast forward, Condola brings up this joke to Lawrence while they're on like a lunch or a dinner date. And Lawrence gets like really uncomfortable. Instead of Lawrence admitting to Condola in that moment that he was uncomfortable with them communicating about him, he tries to play it cool and act like it doesn't affect him. I hate that because that could have been like a really great moment for them to establish like a new level in their relationship instead of like you don't always have to be so cool. If your priority in a relationship is to be like the cool person who don't care about nothing, your relationship is fake. You have to be vulnerable at some point. And I think that trust in relationships is built upon mutual vulnerability, like each person building upon like I'm sharing this with you, share this with me. And I really wish he had just like leaned in and said, well, yeah, that actually does make me uncomfortable. And I would prefer, you know, exactly what he ended up going and telling Issa. I wish he had shared with Condola. And I think something there's something to the fact that he preferred to have that vulnerability or, you know, to have that conversation with Issa on some kind of it wasn't wrong but it's like he moving funny like you didn't have to move funny in order to have that conversation because it kind of looks like you went behind condola's back it just don't look right it's harmless but it don't look right and it does say say something about the level of intimacy that you have with Issa that you haven't developed with condola yet but you could have developed it by just being honest so he goes over to Issa's house and says, I want Condola to get to know me through me and not through you. And it was a you know cool conversation, but then that leads Issa to later texting him. Hey, does Condola know that we had this conversation? No, it wasn't that deep. We probably shouldn't tell her. That little bit of, oh, let's not bring it up. That's gonna come back to bite them in the ass. I know it. And I wish Lawrence had just been mature and and humble enough to, to tell condola in the moment like yeah this don't sit right with me and instead he went and let his dumb ass friends like hype him up into doing some shit that just was not productive so moving on to molly and andrew <sighs> okay <laughs> molly made some very valid points in terms of i feel like he's not opening up to me and like i feel like i'm the only one who's sharing and that's really tricky when you're just getting to know someone. You're, again, you're trying to be vulnerable in exchange for their vulnerability, like this give and take, give and take, but he's he shuts down. And I was actually proud of Molly for calling him out on it because it's such a delicate balance. Like when you first start talking to someone who you're interested in and you like want it to go somewhere, you also want to take the time to establish boundaries and to say like, hey, this is how I would like for things to be. But I think we're also kind of afraid of doing that because you don't want to press a person too hard. You don't want to violate their boundaries. And it's this like delicate balance, this like delicate dance of back and forth. So I really appreciated that she told Andrew like, hey, I would really like to know what was going on with like your call from work or why don't you have a relationship with your sister? And I think that by her giving him that genuine apology later in the episode to say, hey, I'm sorry if I was pushing too hard or, you know, whatever, whatever, he was receptive. And he was like, I appreciate you calling me out on this and it's going to take time, but I do recognize what you're saying and like, can you be patient with me? That was so beautiful. That's a mature relationship. And at a point, you know, when they were having dinner and you know, Molly said, well, I want to be with someone who I think she used the term substance, who has substance. And I think maybe her wording was off, but that's, it's okay for you to let a person know like what kind of relationship you're trying to establish. And when he said you find some, you find a problem with everything, or there's always a problem with you. That is true. Molly does find an issue in everything always, but this time she was spot on accurate. And I appreciate that she was rewarded for that honesty. But you can also see that from her not being honest with her colleague, I forget that guy's name, he's kind of a dick, but you know, from her not being honest and upfront with him last season, you know, with the whole thing that happened um, with the case that they were working on, she's now trying to retroactively fix that relationship. She's now trying to retroactively, 
you know, be cool and like make conversation and he's not receptive to it. So when he finally comes into her office, like, you know, following this meeting they had where she didn't just come out and say what needed to be said in that meeting, he's like, what's up? Like, tell me like what's going on? Why would you like let me do work unnecessarily? And she just finally was like, okay, cards on the table. I hate what happened last time. I apologize. I'm trying to move forward. And just to show like a little bit of like his humanity. Sometimes when you apologize to a person, they're not ready. They can accept your apology, but they're not ready to just automatically move forward with the friendship. That's real shit. Sometimes you mess up in a way where people are just like, I'm done. Or it's going to take them a while to actually be cool with you. So I really appreciated um, the reality of, of that that situation um lastly we have to talk about molly and Issa, which is basically kind of the overriding connected th connective theme or thread throughout this season which is kind of seeing how this friendship is devolving molly and Issa have a bad habit of gaslighting each other based on past history because Issa has made a mess of her own life Molly always assumes that whatever she's doing is messy. Because Molly has historically and kind of present day always looked for problems where there weren't any, Issa assumes that that's what she's doing in this relationship with Andrew. This is one of the worst things that can happen in an adult friendship where people are growing, but their friends are still looking at them through the lens of who they were. I hate that shit. It's stressful. It's caused me to kind of create distance between myself and some of my friends because I know the work that I've done on myself. And when that work is not acknowledged and I'm treated as if I'm operating, like you're treating me based on old information. And I found that frustrating on both parts where, you know, Molly is finally trying to like catch up with Issa because they seem to be like really out of sync. Like, you know, Molly, Issa didn't know that Molly had finally slept with Andrew and, you know, they, they're a little bit like off balance in terms of their communication, in terms of their friendship. And they were gaslighting each other so hard. Whereas, I mean, are you sure? Like, da -da. and then I really experienced this a lot, like as a single friend where I feel like people just want me to accept whatever comes my way. And when I say, oh, I'm not really like feeling that about this person. It's, well, are you sure you're not just like, being anal are you sure you're not just like giving him too hard of a time respect your friends when they tell you how they feel about some shit like people deserve to feel the way that they feel in relationships and if they're coming to you don't gaslight people about what their feelings are because nine times out of ten your feeling is right a lot of times like your gut feeling especially if it's actually a gut feeling and not just like a trauma response it's not lying to you most of the time when something isn't right, when you feel something isn't right, it actually isn't. So yeah, I think a huge part of what's messing their friendship up is them mutually gaslighting each other based on old information about each other. Like having history with a friend can complicate things in that regard. Um, the other thing I want to say, bitch, don't invite somebody to a di Do not bring a surprise guest to a dinner. Or a lunch. I can't stand that because I come to the function ready to discuss or engage with you in a certain way and you done brought in a whole other bitch who I don't even know like that. Don't do that. Oh, I really don't like that. And I know Issa really didn't mean any harm by it and like these are her two friends and she like wants them to connect but they need to connect organically. You can't like force it. And I, while I do think that Molly is a petty bitch and she's a bit stingy <laughs> in terms of her friendship with Issa and she doesn't she seems to not trust Condola, and I think there's like a level of jealousy there with Condola, but I really do understand that. I hate when people like bring a surprise guest, and I have a friend who her boyfriend pops up everywhere that we are, and or she'll invite me somewhere, and I assume it's a girl's night, and then I end up being a third wheel. It's one of the worst things. Like, do not surprise guest your friends. Oh my gosh, that like had me seething. And then for the whole dinner or the whole lunch, you're sitting there kind of how to like recalibrate whatever you was planning to talk about with personally with your close personal friend. Now you got to come up with some new shit because it's a whole other person here. Like, don't do that to people. That was just like inconsiderate. Um, to wrap things up, I'm really enjoying this season so far. 
I think that this whole situation between um, Issa, Lawrence, and Condola, I think that this like low key, like secret meeting between Issa and Lawrence is gonna come back to bite them in the ass. Because why couldn't you have that level of intimacy with the new girl that you claim you want things to work with? What do that mean, Lawrence? What do that say about you, Martin Lawrence? I got questions. So I'm enjoying this episode. Um, I'm enjoying this season. Um, I really think that this is a masterclass on what happens when you don't communicate effectively and in a timely manner and with people who are receptive and the way that we, we respond to that based on our um, attachment styles, which is something that I'm discussing with um, my readers in my wellness newsletter. So make sure that you're subscribed to that so that we can have this conversation a little bit more in depth in terms of like wellness and how that applies to us personally. So thank you guys for tuning in. We will talk soon. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and tell your daddy to send me some money. Talk soon. Bye.